Well, a very good morning and welcome to your world this Thursday, the 18th day of March, when East Africa and indeed the entire African continent is mourning the death of Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli, who died last evening aged 61. We will be bringing you the latest on this story, but for now it's time to talk about COVID-19 vaccines and Kenya's fight against the coronavirus pandemic received a major boost earlier this month when the country received over 1 million doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. But a number of countries are actually suspending the use of this vaccine over safety concerns. So is it really safe to use this vaccine? We answer all your questions regarding the vaccine in a short while with my panel of experts. My name is Victor Kiprop. Welcome to the show. This is your world. Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli dies aged 61. The government officials blame heart complications, but are they masking the truth? The COVID-19 vaccine is finally here, but are the people ready to take it? The government has begun inoculating healthcare workers and other frontline workers, but how exactly does the vaccine work? We have your answers. And it's been a week since Rwanda's President Paul Kagame became the first East African leader to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Right, understanding the COVID-19 vaccine and of course addressing the issues around the safety of the vaccine. That's a discussion of the day. I have a very interesting panel that will help us delve into that. But on our question of the day, of course, we ask you, are you ready to receive the COVID-19 vaccine job? Are you ready? receive the COVID-19 vaccine job. Share your, of course, your feedback and your comments on social media. Twitters at NTV Kenya at Victor Kiprop underscore on Twitter. Use the hashtag new normal. This conversation is also ongoing on Facebook and Instagram where you could be a uh, part of it. But for now, uh, let's take a look at the state of, um, of course, uh, the coronavirus infections globally. And we have the latest numbers uh, globally the, in, in whole numbers. 121 million people, that is the number of people who have so far been infected with COVID-19 across uh, the world. 68.7 million of them have recovered. And of course, sadly, we have lost 2.68 uh, million people to COVID-19 uh, globally so far. Let's bring the conversation uh, closer home. And in Kenya, 116,310. That's the latest number from the Ministry of Health of people who have been confirmed uh, with the COVID-19 virus in Kenya. 89,061 of them have, of course, recovered according to those statistics. And of course, sadly, uh, 1,937 of us have lost their lives uh, to COVID-19 so far in Kenya. And of course, this is uh, an opportunity for our daily reminder to give you our daily reminder to, of course, continue observing uh, the protocols that have been set out by the Ministry of Health that includes social distancing, making sure you, of course, wear your mask and sanitize all the time so that we can all continue to play a role in, in um, helping reduce, um, of course, the spread of this infection in the country. Uh, for now, maybe we can give you an update of what else is happening um, around the world. And Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli has died from heart complications at the age of 61. Uh, Samia Seluhu, the, vice, the country's vice president, announced last evening in a state address. The announcement of President Magufuli's death comes after weeks of uncertainty over his health condition and whereabouts after he failed to appear in public for more than two weeks. Samia Hassan is now the acting president of Tanzania, but a date for, for her swearing in as Tanzania's first female vice uh, First female president, I beg your pardon, has not yet been announced.
announced. The announcement also comes days after Prime Minister Kasim Majali were dismissed speculations about Magufuli's health, insisting that the president was in fact okay but busy. He blamed the rumors on hateful Tanzanians living abroad. And Rwanda's President Paul Kagame became the first leader in East Africa to receive the COVID-19 vaccine a week ago after the country received some 100,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech drug and 240,000 doses of the AstraZeneca Oxford medicine. Kagame and his wife Jeanette were pictured receiving their jobs on Rwandan President's official Twitter account. Rwanda, a country of 12 million people, plans to inoculate 30% uh, of the population this year and 60% by the end of 2022. And in February, Rwanda became the first country in East Africa to begin vaccinating uh, its people against the disease, targeting high-risk groups such as healthcare workers after acquiring about 1,000 doses of the Moderna job. Okay, and maybe before we go into that discussion of helping you understand the COVID-19 vaccine in Kenya and address the issues of safety around it, at least 20,000 people have been uh, vaccinated so far uh, for COVID-19 in Kenya. That's according to the Ministry uh, of Health with the latest figures uh, released yesterday, about two weeks after the vaccine arrived in the country. But how exactly does this vaccine work? Helena Ura has been finding out. We've seen images of people lining up to receive the COVID-19 job in Kenya and in other countries. But what happens once the vaccine enters the body? Dr. Moses Masika, who is a virologist at the University of Nairobi, had this to say. The AstraZeneca vaccine is made up of a, 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 a viral vector that, or a virus that is not uh, infectious in humans. It doesn't grow in humans. And um, it is meant that once it enters the body, it expresses or it produces part of the, uh, what you call the spike protein of the COVID-19 virus. And this part or that is similar to the COVID-19 virus alerts our bodies that yes, there's a foreign uh, thing in your body and it will produce, the body will produce antibodies against that part. What if you've been infected by the virus? Does the vaccine still work? Well, according to the Ministry of Health, once you've become and then recover, the COVID-19 antibodies remain in your body, but they wear out after six months, which means you may still be reinfected. Not everybody who develops COVID has long-lasting immunity, and we're hoping that the vaccine will boost this immunity so that their body is able to protect themselves, uh, to protect itself in future if they get re-exposed to COVID-19. So yes, having suffered COVID-19 before is not a reason to avoid the vaccine. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine will be administered in two doses within a period of eight weeks. The Ministry of Health says you have to get both doses for it to work. There has been a misunderstanding that people with allergies to eggs and other proteins or other non-allergies should avoid this uh, vaccine. That is not true. The only absolute uh, group that is forbidden to re receive this vaccine is a group that has re reacted to the vaccine before. So for example, I received the vaccine on Monday. If I'd had a severe reaction to this vaccine, I would not be allowed to get the second dose because that would be putting my life in jeopardy. But these other known allergies like eggs, dust, uh, I don't know what else, meat, those are not a contraindication to uh, this vaccine. Like any other vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine has some mild effects. To start off, I'd like to say that the vaccine is safe. I mean, from the number of people tested, over 24,000 people tested, we've seen that the vaccine is safe. It does cause mild to moderate um, side effects, and these are known. We know it may cause fever in some people, it may cause muscle aches, it may cause a headache, it may cause joint pains, and these are often mild and can be treated easily. Helen Aura, MTV.
We're now ready to start that discussion on this understanding the COVID-19 vaccine in Kenya, the progress in rollout to, uh, of course, healthcare workers and other um, frontline uh, workers like teachers who have been prioritized in this vaccine. And the questions, of course, that are keep coming in around the safety of this vaccine, uh, as well as what we have seen in other countries which are now beginning to suspend the use, of course, of these vaccines. And the question in everyone's mind is, are these uh, things uh, really safe? We have all the answers, of course, to your questions this morning because in my panel this morning, everyone, everyone, and I mean everyone, is a doctor except myself, of course. Um, with me in studio, I have Dr. Willis Akwale, is it Awale? Uh, of course, the chairman of the COVID-19 task force in Kenya. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, thank um, you. Joining us also on the other side, uh, of course, of, of the studio is Dr. Andrew uh, Gashi. He's the chief medical director at Nairobi West Hospital. Welcome to the show. Joining us virtually is Dr. Ivan Jenga. She's the chair of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council. Welcome to the show. And, of course, also on the other part of studio is James Gatuki, is a family physician. Those are the people who will help us, of course, delve into the discussion of the day. But we don't want to leave you, Howard, because this is a very important uh, matter, of course, that concerns the public. We want you to be part of the conversation. And today we ask you on our question of the day, are you ready to receive the COVID-19 vaccine job? Are you ready to receive the COVID-19 vaccine job? You can send us your feedback on Twitter at NTV Kenya at Victor Kiprop underscore. You can use the hashtag new normal. Uh, we're also, of course, um, continuing this discussion on Facebook and Instagram where you can be part of it. We can also open up our lines, by the way, if you feel like you want to ask, uh, of course, your question directly to the experts that we have in studio this morning. It's time to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine in Kenya and address the issues of safety, uh, of course, surrounding the vaccine, which the government began rolling out to healthcare workers two weeks ago. And, of course, will be rolled out to other workers, including, uh, of course, members of the security forces and teachers. But for now, it's time to uh, start the conversation. And I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Kwale. Clearly, our fight against COVID-19 over the last... Um, one year has largely been around preventing uh, the spread of COVID-19, which that's why we had all these uh, issues, of course, and, and restrictions. But a week, a few weeks ago, we now have the vaccine um, in the country that will help us, of course, uh, advance this fight. But the question in everyone's mind right now is: It is it safe? Are they this vaccine safe? No. Thank you very much, Victor, for hosting me. And uh, let me start by also sending my condolences to the people of Tanzania. Actually, we can start there with your reactions. Yes, uh, I, it is sad indeed. Um, uh, President Magufuli, I think, had a very unique um, leadership style. And uh, I think he'll be remembered a lot on uh, what he had to say about COVID-19. Um, uh, quite a bit of what was not happening there is what was happening in Kenya. And uh, when you look at COVID-19, the first defense is really personal hygiene, high levels of personal and community hygiene. That is what helped Kenya really uh, ensure that the, 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 the first wave and the second wave were in a large way contained. So personal hygiene, social distancing, uh, the things we did about masking, very, very, very crucial in terms of prevention. But if you remember, as we went uh, through these waves, it, it, we had dramatic deaths. We had people dying. Now we have almost 2,000 people who have since died. And these are the ones whom we have the records. It could be higher. So then the question is, how come some people are dying, others are not? And um, death rates uh, really started averaging between 2 to 3%. And in some countries, you see, um, like the U.S. now, Half a million people dead. Really, really uh, serious. So the scientists started racing against time. 
And um, there were vaccine platforms that were already available, the old traditional ones, the so-called viral vector that Dr. Masika talked about, but we also had the nucleic uh, acid ones built on a platform that was already being prepared for vaccines against Ebola. And the, the, so Moderna and Pfizer in particular, the so-called nucleic acid. Now, one of the questions, and the question you ask is whether these vaccines are safe. Now, vaccine, in vaccine development or any health product, including pharmaceutical, you have what you call phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four of cl clinical trials. Phase two and three in particular look at safety issues. You look at how effective it is, how safe it is, both in the animal model and then you move to the human model. And you cannot get what you call emergency use authorization if it is not safe. So we begin from there that with emergency use authorization by stringent regulatory authorities, reputable one, uh, including the World Health Organization, these vaccines are safe. Okay, uh, but, but of course the, the nature of vaccines generally, uh, as we have all known, is, is it normally takes time to, mm. of course, uh, develop them. But with the COVID one, I think it's been just under a year and we have a COVID-19 vaccine. Do you think um, the, the concerns about maybe it was rushed, rushed are, the ones, are the reasons behind why people are a bit skeptical? It is a valid question to ask, but it's also good to understand what was happening prior to this. And as I've said, prior to this, scientists had come and they were, they, were, they, they were looking at various platforms. And they had already developed some platforms. There are those who rode on, 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 on the old platforms that really require inactivation, uh, where you really kill the virus and it's now no longer that virus that you are using. But as I said... You see, Ebola, which has a higher uh, death rate, um, uh, out of 100 who contracted, 20 people will die, much higher. People were working already on those platforms. So it was easy to ride on them. So you are not beginning from scratch. So that, is, that explains one reason. So using old platforms, known and quickly developing, and new platforms that were already uh, uh, ready for use. Okay. So, so th there was no rushing as such. And that is why under emergency use, then you go to what we call phase four. Uh, phase four is you are, you are deploying it to a wider community, but with a lot of what you call regulatory uh, observations. You want to be sure. It is safe, but there may be small parts of the population that something could go wrong. And that is why then you, you have to monitor. And the suspension you hear is not a stop. It, it, it is not what you call revocation. It is not that it has cost. Actually, up to now, nobody has um, uh, um, uh, linked the vaccine to the actual cost of the clots. Okay. But out of caution, out of safety, and you want to do due process, you usually suspend, get to understand what is happening, and once that has not, uh, is, there is no cost, you continue. In fact, what the media is not reporting is then how many countries resume mm -hmm. as we speak. Canada has resumed, Spain has resumed, just yesterday Italy, France have also resumed. Okay, I'll come back to you about, of course, to these concerns that are around the vaccine, but let me bring in uh, Dr. James Gaduki. Uh, Dr. Gaduki, uh, at, at, a, at a critical time when, of course, we finally have a vaccine, how much of a setback are, are these issues of now people starting to doubt um, the efficacy or even the safety of the vaccine? Uh, you make a valid point that... Uh, while we've fought for so long to have a vaccine against COVID, now that we have finally one available here, uh, we are busy staring uh, what you'd call the proverbial gift horse in the mouth, saying, let's wait and see what happens elsewhere. Uh, the thing about maybe the last one year where vaccines are concerned is we've had tremendous progress in terms of bringing the conversation around vaccines to households, you know, everyone is talking about vaccines now, which is a good thing. But the, the converse, the flip side of it is that uh, we are also being bombarded with information left, right and center about, you know, the, what I would call the naysayers, the vaccine naysayers, people who, regardless of what vaccine is brought to the market, they'll always say, no, vaccines no. are a problem. Mm. We shouldn't do vaccines. So those concerns, and it's, it's an everyday thing. Those concerns are things that are being, are being seen today and they are developing to the point where even people who should be getting the vaccine 
are holding off. You have healthcare workers who are afraid to get the vaccine because they are not sure. All of this information available, they are not sure uh, what decision do you make. Okay. So I think it, it now becomes necessary for leadership and, and everyone, including uh, you, uh, Victor. We are all leaders. It becomes important for us to, to be on, pro, on uh, what did I say, on, uh, on point that we, we can't be speaking in two languages. If vaccines are going to be the thing that allows us to get out of this pandemic, then we all need to be saying, you know what, let us try and get as many people vaccinated. Okay. Yes. All right. Let me bring in Dr. Eva Njenga here. She's the chair of the KMPDC. Dr. this crisis of trust that we're, we're starting to see um, around the vaccine, is it something that we can afford to have at this moment? Dr. if you can unmute your mic, please, because we, we can't hear you. Please unmute your mic. Good morning. Good, good morning. Can you hear Welcome. me? <laughs> thank you. Good morning, all. And thank you for inviting us uh, on this show. And uh, again, uh, like uh, Akwarek, can I offer my condolences to our brothers and sisters in TZ? Now, um, the vaccine has come with a lot of questions and doubts, conspiracy theories and all. We at the council, being a, a health regulator, we, we do see this as it's not very, anything unusual when you're introducing something new. You remember when the HPV vaccine, there were still doubts. There are so many uh, messages that came through to mi mixed, uh, saying it's not safe, it will cause cancer, it's causing infertility. What I believe and what uh, the, the Dr. Gafuki has said is that we must uh, give people and transmit the correct messages. As a council, we have come out to uh, bring out facts bring the science behind and what the, like Dr. What Dr. Akwari has said, the science behind this vaccine. And to remind people that in, with every vaccination, even you, if uh, a simple uh, analogy is when we take our children for the DPT, they, most of them will get some fever, uh, some uh, small uh, uh, irritation. We always will give them some cup of paracetamol. And it's not different from this vaccine. When you take a flu jab, most of us will get a little bit of irritation on the arm, and then some people actually get headaches, others get muscle pains, and this passes away. Because you're introducing something that makes your body fight. And this is the idea. We are getting something to help our, our body be ready for the virus when it comes. So that when, it doesn't mean you may not be exposed to the virus, but when it comes, your body will be ready to mount that immunity and the fight. So I... My idea of what we should do is us as a medical fraternity, especially, and you, the media, who are very good at giving messages, is get the correct message. And so that we tell our people, I, I got my, my vaccine a week ago. I honestly didn't feel anything. I've been getting my flu jabs every year. And most times after my flu jab, I always get a sore arm. Occasionally, I get my, a mild headache. With this one, I got nothing. That doesn't mean my next uh, friend would, or my colleague would get a few of my colleagues have said they have had headaches, but nothing is that's lasting more than 24 hours. So I believe we need also to tell people that when the, the uh, side effects come, they are mild. There will always be that one person who might get very severe um, uh, reaction because they have had allergies. And those, that's why we have doctors on standby who are trained okay. so that in, in case of such a reaction, uh, that the correct remedy will be given. Okay. Let me bring in Dr. Gashi. He is, of course, um, a frontline health worker. Dr. Tari, you're always uh, in, in the front line of this fight every day, and you see the f severity of this COVID-19 disease every day. At this juncture, how much did we need uh, the vaccine? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Victor, for, this, uh, for the invitation. Uh, may I also take this opportunity to condole our brothers and sisters in Tanzania for the loss of their president. Now, coming to the vaccine, uh, first of all, I would like to confirm that I have already been vaccinated uh, so that I, I don't leave any doubt on that. Okay. And uh, actually, if you look at the history of COVID as a disease, um, we, we all agree it has had a very devastating effect. And every other time people would uh, discuss about COVID, they would say, much as we are having these preventive measures, the only solution or one of the solutions that we really need is the vaccine. 
It's like the world was really waiting for this vaccine. Uh, and, and, and we can tell why, because statistics show that this disease has had a very, very devastating effect. In fact, the effect is still continuing because um, remember, just to remind our people, we are now in the third wave and it has come with a bang. So it's like we all waited for this vaccine, but apparently because of the amount of information we are getting, people are getting confused as far as this vaccine is concerned. My take on this vaccine is that we, really, we are really waiting for it. We, the world really needed it. And even when it has come, the, okay, I do agree in, the, in some places the reception is uh, lukewarm. But my take is that it, considering that we don't have many alternatives, the only solution right now is actually this vaccine. And actually, Victor, if you look at the statistics that we have been given, uh, in the European Union, they have talked of having vaccinated over 17 million people. And uh, out of that, they are saying, okay, 15 of them developed uh, deep venous thrombosis. That's what we mean by DVT. And then probably another 22 developed thromboembolism. That means a blood clot moved from its original site, may it be in the legs or other places, and went into the lungs. When you look at those statistics, probably just slightly over 40 people, out of 17 million, I, I, I think really there is no reason to be worried about this. I'm not in any way um, saying that uh, side effects are not significant. They could be. But nobody has established a cause, um, you know, relationship between the blood clot and the vaccine itself. Okay. So my take is that this is still a relatively, um, you know, safe way of fighting this virus. Remember, right now, we don't have many choices. Okay. And the effect of the disease are still continuing. Okay. My take is, let's take the vaccine. Okay. Uh, you spoke about two things, the costly confusion uh, that, that comes around, and of course, how small these numbers um, are, in, given the population, the amount of people who have been vaccinated. And I'm going to asking, I'm gonna be asking, uh, of course, um, Dr. Akwale that question in a moment. But maybe uh, to the man seated next to you, Dr. Gaduki. Is, Dr. Gashi is speaking about the, the confusion, and I think it's a costly confusion from, uh, from where I sit. Is this something we can afford to have at this moment? The, the world that we live in. We live in a world where everyone has access to information. So we cannot, we cannot deny people that, uh, that right to information. But maybe it's how we we package the information that is uh, that is going out to them because for example if we say that vaccines have no side effects uh, and then someone goes and gets the vaccine and runs a fever you see the thing is, is this person was not prepared for the for the side effects it's important that people are aware that for some people when you get the vaccine you'll get a headache you'll get uh, fevers you might even feel a little nauseous but these are short-lived and they will pass, okay? Okay. So but then, then the, uh, the second thing is that we need to address the misinformation that is available out there. See, the AstraZeneca vaccine now, everyone thinks that if you get it, you are likely to get clots. What Dr. Gashi says is an interesting thing when you think about it. Of those 17 million people, had they not got vaccines, Ordinarily, how many of them would you have expected mm -hmm. to get blood clots, you know, to get thromboembolism? Mm -hmm. Well, from a personal perspective, two of my aunts have had uh, blood clots. They didn't have the AstraZeneca vaccine. So there is also something you, you can say about coincidence and causality. The fact that something happens at the same time as something else doesn't mean that one thing caused the other. Okay. So we also have to be honest and say that See, like, for example, when you roll out polio vaccines in this country, a lot of parents call in and say, oh, my child got sick about uh, the same time when they got the polio vaccine. But we are vaccinating 5 million children. What are the odds that on that day when we did the vaccine, some of those children would have gotten sick anyway? Okay. So I think we have to be honest and say that life continues, even as, as we do our vaccines. Some people, think of it like this, uh, on any given day, people die. 
So there's someone who will get the vaccine and pass on the same day. That's not to say that the vaccine is what caused death. It's just that the vaccine is happening at the same time as life continues. Okay. So all of these things would happen regardless of whether we did the vaccine or not. Okay. I, I think Dr. Kuala has been nodding, uh, of course, to, to some of the points. Maybe he wants to respond as we prepare some sound bites which we asked Kenyans if they are ready to take the vaccine. Yes. I, I think the, the, the important point to note here is that under emergency use authorization, you are required to monitor the side effects. It's actually a requirement before you get what we call full licensure so that it is market, that it can be sold in the market. So the process of doing that, which um, Kenya is doing, uh, anybody who has gone to a vaccination post, you'll be observed and you'll be told in case there's any um, uh, effect that you feel, report to us. In fact, the pharmacy board yesterday was sharing its website so that people can report any of them. Because we also want to know what is happening within our local population. Okay. Yeah, so, so that is critical and, 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 and we are open. Okay. And yesterday we said about 43 reports have been uh, given. Many of them is exactly what Dr. Njenga has said, headache here. Nothing major to warrant an investigation. Okay, but, but if you look at it then, 40 cases out of about 17 million, it's literally a drop in the ocean. But a number of countries are suddenly reacting to that and, and you know, suspending even before they resumed, of course. Uh, do you think this country's then overreacted? Uh, 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 there's an overreaction. I think there are two aspects in this. Uh, th there's the science part. Even here in Kenya, it could be a batch issue. It could be that's why you get a message with your batch. So uh, you, uh, out of caution, you stop and really find out, is there something happening? You know, you could find in the same locality um, reports coming. So you would have to really stop. You can't continue. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what is happening in, the, in, in Europe um, given what my colleagues have actually said here in terms of numbers, then I'll look at it in terms of an overreaction. Okay. Have we established a connection between the, the, the few cases that have been reported uh, and, and, of course, uh, issues around safety uh, with the vaccine? Here in Kenya? I, here in Kenya, yes. No, no. Here in Kenya, none of them really. Because, again, most of them subsided. But mm -hmm. we encourage people to report. Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, we have a soundbite of the West Pokot governor just struggling to, um, you know, assure his people about the safety of the vaccines and battling the, the myths uh, around the vaccines in the, in the areas up country. Let's listen to him. to be vaccinated, why are they, for the first time, refusing to be number one? Every, it looks like every now and then, anything that good that comes, politicians are always number one. But this one is very good. So I want, us to, I, want, I, want, I want to challenge Kenyans to tell you, when you see something like this has come, it means now your leaders have decided and they have realized that at such a time as this, is, uh, you offer and allow your people to, to, to come first so that uh, and then it is not your people only, it is those people that are at risk, those people that are in the front line, health workers, and so on, so on, so on. Starting tomorrow when they are around, I will also, when they, when, when it reaches land in West Pogot, I will also go and super, we will check, check how we are starting the first doses around. It might not be on me, because as a leader, we have, we have, we have, we have uh, they have said we start with the, the, with the, with the, with the citizens, which is okay. But it will also be okay if and even if we start with us, so that we can also give an assurance to the people that all is well. We have a very serious, critical doubting Thomases who are Kenyans. Why have they started with us first? Looks like they want to see what will happen. I don't think we should go to stretch our minds. We should have been watching. It's the same drug that they have been given to other people in the world that is working. So we should be celebrating our president, celebrating our country, celebrating our leaders for choosing to do uh, to bring these vaccines to us here. Thank the government of Kenya for following all the COVID uh, regulations and enforcing and teaching our people 
to make sure that we all for it cases and COVID prevalence is contained and uh, managed in this in this in this country. So we support. We have followed to uh, do the dot, and we are the only county still <laughs> that continue to wash our hands through entrance. Uh, public entrance to, to the county where you can to the county of court through designated areas you will always find somewhere to wash your hands this is what we have been doing and uh, we are now monitoring the and working closely with the minister of uh, the ministry of health uh, both in the county and the national to make sure that uh, all those rules and regulations are followed i am still asking kenyans that we should not ignore these rules Okay, remember we asked the rest of the country how if they are, how prepared they are, of course, to take this uh, COVID-19 vaccines and we should have their voices from across the country on how they are prepared and if they are ready to actually take the vaccine. I'm not ready for vaccination because side effects. Maybe we to and to do a Tuziseme maisha ni ya serikali maisha ni yetu. Ukiathirika ni wewe ndio utakuwa maathirika. Kwa hivyo ndio naomba wa Kenya hii chanjo vile imekuja tusiweke siasa mingi ndani. Hii chanjo ya corona sidhani kama itatusaidia sisi wa Kenya kwa maana hata sisi tukichanjwa haimaanishi kwamba tumepata dawa kamili. I'm so grateful for the government vinyo wame, wame decide to offer COVID-19 vaccine. We are just waiting for the frontline uh, front workers who are Malize Kukua vaccinated. Then, when the right time, it is Africa to patiwe na fasi ya sisi kuenda kuwa vaccinated. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm very much ready. Mimi hiyo chanjo nitaka kuwa nataka kupewa, nitafikiria kwanza. Kwa sababu sijaelewa vizuri. Nataka mtu anieleweshe kwa kirefu nielewe. Ijapokuwa najua corona ipo. Lakini hiyo chanjo mpaka nielezwe nielewe. Mimi shindano ile ya corona naamini corona iko inaua lakini shindano ile mimi siko ready kupewa kwa sababu mpaka watu wa kwenye serikali wanafanyikazi wa serikali wadungwa hizo mashindano kama rais wetu wa Kenya tukimuona kwenye runinga anadungwa shindano ile na watu wengine ndio sisi watu wa chini tutakubali kutibiwa hiyo shindano ya corona. Tunaamini hivyo. Kwa sababu wezi dungwa kitu ambacho mkubwa mwenyewe bado hajatibiwa nacho. Kama mimi siko tayari ku kundungwa hiyo vaccine. Kwa sababu sinjajua usalama wake ni kwa vipi na vipi. Na naofia afya yangu mara nasikia hivi na hivi. Pia hiyo naofia afya yangu afadhali nijilinde hivyo hivyo na ambao ambao najilinda mpaka saa hii kuliko kwa hii dawa ambayo imeletwa inatutia tashishi sana hatuelewi yani malengo yake ama itatufanyia nini kwenye kivili chetu lakini kwa usalama ningeondelea mtu yote yule atake kubali kupigwa hii sindano itakuwa ni usalama kwa, kwa mtu yote yule the government ikuwe honest na sisi kama kuna side effects watuambie do kila mtu akuwe on the know Alafu kama igezekana the government kama dawa inakuja ikuwe available kwa mtu wa kipato cha chini isikuwe tu ina stick pale na mtu wako na pesa mimi mpaka ni one MP mmoja ametestiwa tukiwa na yeye ni thibitishe pia amekula hiyo covid vaccine ndio mimi nitaitikia kuingishwa kwa hiyo nini kuchukua hiyo vaccine i stuck in and even kwa mazombi zombi hivi stuck hapa iniharibikie the side effects will, it will have for me if at all it will be positive, then I'll be okay with it. But come it will be negative, I, I don't see the need of taking it. I'm willing to get the vaccine because um, the virus is taken out to many people. It's about time we took action against it. Mamba ya kusema ati kwanza waanze kupea wale watu wakubwa na huko juu. Kwanza wangetangulia kupea wale watu vulnerables. Kwa sababu wata mikutano ya siyasa, mbado hawa watu wanaenda kwa mikutano, Hawa wakubwa wetu wote wa, nini watadungwa lakini mwananchi wa kawaida hawa ndio tu wanachanganyika if people are vaccinated will be able to go back to normal lives because we put the, the 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 sorry the virus in control and i would be very willing to 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 be jabbed nakuja 
iko sawa because inakuja kuokoa inakuja kuokoa maisha ya watu in africa corona was not that dangerous it, did, it didn't affect us that much so vaccine is not a priority i think most of the african countries that are prioritizing uh, vaccine are mostly corrupt countries the the vaccine distribution will be mad with corruption says kubali of vaccination ya corona sababu nasikia pengine zingine inaumiza wanaume aita itafanya wazisai tena na sisi wengine pengine hatujazaa so hatutakuwa na future tuwezi kubali mimi siwezi kubali kutungwa inafanya kazi nzuri na naomba serikali ianze na raia wa chini wa kawaida serikali tuhakikishie kuwa wananchi wa kawaida watafikiwa na chanjo yenyewe halisi na pia waanziwe hao ndio kama si si genuine kwa kuwa kwanza kuadhiriwa siko ready for now na ngoja kwanza wale watu wa juu wakuwe vaccinated alafu mimi baadaye tena naomba serikali ya eh? isije ikapotea potea kama PPEs vile zilipotea za madaktari Right, Kenyans from various parts of the country, of course, giving their feedback on whether they are ready to take the vaccine. And actually, definitely a mix of reactions there mm. from those who are ready to take it, a majority of them who are not ready to take it, those who are saying there's no inf enough mm. information, and the ones who are just um, outrightly worried about the misinformation that's, uh, that's ongoing. What do you have to say? Yeah, you know, hesitancy is a difficult subject in the medical field. Uh, there are many causes of hesitancy. There are people, there will be a group, that has inf the right information, but they are hesitant. There are those with the wrong information, they'll be hesitant. Then you have people in between here. And on the ex extreme end, you have what you call the anti-vaxxers, the people who just oppose Completely. any vaccination. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is a subject we are dealing with, and that is why the deployment plan you will see, uh, we have a very big uh, area in terms of communication, advocacy communication, and community mobilization. And for us, our main objective is to really inform people, give them the information, create that demand. You know, in the end, I, I had one of uh, the Kenyans, Honorable Kenyans, saying um, we were not affected as much. Um, he really needs to, uh, to read the Spanish flu and, and realize that it kept coming in waves. The first wave was not so much. Mm -hmm. The, 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 when the uh, second wave came, it went with over 50 million people. Mm -hmm. Now we've just started the third wave. And if, if you really hear the statistics that the ministry is giving, it is bad. It seems to be more lethal. So we must be on our guard. And therefore, this, uh, um, the, the availability of the vaccine, yes, we are going to continue giving that information. We are going to ramp up what we need to do, and we leave it for individual people to make their decision. Do you think it would have been, uh, the, the perception would have been better if the president or the deputy president led in taking the vaccine? But we also wanted to send a message, the frontline health workers. Keep you imagine the ICU now are full. Those people in front, they are taking care of the critically ill. They are most exposed. Can you imagine if that one dose, who should be most vulnerable? Th those are the people. Secondly, we've looked at uh, what you call our uh, death profile. Majority of the people dying are the 60 plus with comorbidities. These are the people we wanted to protect first. Okay. And then uh, we, we've said first, the, 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 the biggest issue is the availability of the vaccines. Once they become readily available, everybody else will be called onto the queue. Okay. Let me bring in Dr. Eva Njenga here because she spoke earlier on about um, the issue of the need for communications. And Dr. Ari, even clearly the, the thing that came through uh, from all those sound bites that we have had from Kenyans is the need for communications. And not just... Um, communication by, I know even the media play a role, but communication from even, um, you know, sources that are trusted, and one of them um, um, is doctors. Yeah, Victor, I totally agree with you. I, I think uh, the way we've been communicating, so far we have communicated uh, to our population about the vaccine is not adequate. And uh, I think Dr. Akwari clearly said, we started slow, the systems had to be put in place, and then now the communication strategy is being rolled out. We as a council are engaging our association members, our doctors, uh, and all the other uh, people that are in the health industry. If somebody said that even the medical, the doctors are, were hesitant, but I can tell you from where I stand, it, it was a bit slow to get the vaccines even to the private sector. 
So our hospital, uh, the private sec- uh, facilities only got their vaccine this, this week. And people actually are queuing. All people I know have been calling the council. When are we getting the vaccine? The doctors are... So it's not... People should not just have a blanket uh, system saying that even the medics don't want the vaccine. Let's, let's tell people why we haven't had the vaccine. We had not been given the doses. They only came this, this week. Uh, Aquari will tell you that they, they had logistic issues to get all the facilities equipped to set up the center so that they are safe. The stores for the vaccines are safe. The charger app is just about to get up and running so that we keep that information. And I think, listening to the people who've been interviewed, honestly, most of them, what it comes out is that we, the, we've not been told. We don't know about the side effects. It is now up to us. And we must step up, get out there. All of us get ourselves involved. The council is mobilizing people. And I know their societies are mobilizing people, telling the people the truth. And once people get to know that this vaccine might, will save, save lives, it will not stop you from getting the, the, the virus. You may get it, but it will be mild. And the thing is, as we know, somebody will ask, is it for life? There's no, it's not been studied long enough to know whether when you get one jab uh, or the two jabs, you're, you are immune for life. Uh, for the flu vaccine, you get it annually. So as we're moving along, we are studying and understanding the, uh, the impact and the effectiveness and how long it lasts. And not just in Kenya, other parts of the world. Africa, unfortunately, if somebody says it's, that we are not affected much, but just know that we are also not getting enough vaccines. Most of the developed countries are holding and keeping, they have bought almost all the doses for their people. And we need to ask ourselves, why? Why are they refusing to give us? Or how, why are we not getting access? Because they want to make sure their people are all vaccinated. We need to wake up and urge our people, even that little that comes, okay. let's get vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. And definitely, of course, we asked you to be part of this conversation. You send us your feedback on our question of the day. We asked you, are you ready to receive your COVID-19 job? Are you ready to receive your COVID-19 job? And we asked you to send your feedback on uh, Twitter at NTV Kenya at Victor Kiprop underscore use the hashtag new normal. And I think we have some, by the way. Henry Mbai, Henry Mbai says, yes, I'm ready. I better risk with the vaccine than risk with corona. Thank you, Henry. We have Michael Ocheng. He says, a big no. It takes a lot of trials and years to get a vaccine, but this one's were rushed. Definitely, that's something we addressed earlier on with uh, Dr. Kwale. Kihara Ambola, he says, this is an experiment on humans. Uh, we haven't learned the long-term consequences. Uh, thank you, Kihara. Prince Raymond Mturuki says, the last time I received a vaccine was several years ago when I was still a toddler. I, I ain't getting any vaccine. Thank you, Prince Raymond. Uh, Davido Victor, he says, I don't know. In fact, that's the hardest question to answer at the moment. Definitely people who are yet to make up their minds. We have Munio Willis, he says, nah, <laughs> I wear a mask. I wash my hands, cough by elbow and eat healthy. What is suspicious? Uh, what is a suspicious vaccine for? I might die or slow die thinking or preventing. Of course, Monia will revisit that question on what is more efficient, uh, whether it's protecting yourself uh, with hygiene or the vaccine. Uh, Otuka Bush, Georgia, he says, a big N. People have struggled to cure cancer, yet you die of cardiac arrest. Some treat cold fever, yet mosquito kills them. So what's a corona vaccine? Thank you, Boris. Uh, Steve Sander reborn, he says, you cannot recover from things like polio and measles uh, for a virus like corona. It has been proven and still uh, people recover every day. Why take a vaccine and also advise to wear masks? Say to the Russians, it is well. My sure vaccine is in the blood of Jesus. Thank you. We'll also be addressing the issue of, of course, of religion in, in, in people. Uh, you know, uh, being reluctant to take the vaccine. Peter Kiprono Lewis, he says, no, I won't. My body already developed immunity against corona and other viruses to God almighty be the glory. Thank you, Peter. Part of those issues will be addressed by the experts. Emmanuel Field Mwangi, he says, I better die with the virus than being vaccinated. Uh, definitely, of course, uh, part of the outrageous feedback that we received, but thank you for sending it. Keep uh, JVSN, he says, ha, 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 
I like Kenyans so much because they can resist anything. But here in Uganda, people are running away from being vaccinated. So definitely that's a viewer from Uganda. And uh, let's get the last one. Justin Case, he says, who? Me? Over my dead body. God is my vaccine and no any evil directed to, uh, towards me shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus I trust and believe. Thank you, of course, for being part of this conversation and sending us your feedback. Our experts will be addressing some of those issues, including the angle of religion in people, of course, being a bit skeptic and reluctant to take the vaccine. When we come back from this break, of course, we will be talking about um, the updating the rollout of the vaccine, how many people have received the vaccine so far, and what does it mean for the people who have taken it? Does it mean we can throw away the mask and go to the party? Our doctors will be responding to that uh, in a short bit. But remember also, we're still following up the story of the passing on of the, form of the Tanzanian president, John Pombe Magufuli, who died last evening in Dar es Salaam uh, in what the government blamed uh, or attributed to heart complications. That's a story we are following up. Our correspondents in Tanzania, of course, joined us earlier to bring us the latest, and we will not hesitate to bring you, um, of course, the latest with regards to this story that we are still following up of the passing of the former president of Tanzania, John Pombe Magufuli. We go for a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back before you know it. Mavumbi ni ataruri Binadamu ni mavumbi Mavumbi ni ataruri Na tukifika huko Tutaimba haleluya Makao ya raha na nastare Iko huko mbinguni Binadamu ni Mavumbi ni ataru Binadamu ni mavumbi Mavumbi ni ataru Na tukipika huko Tutaimba haleluya Makao ya raha unastare Iko huko mbingu Na tukipika Let's see what they're developing right now. Morphix really pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. Nunua ofa kama credo double double na tunukiwa minutes ili uendelee kuongea zaidi na upate zawadi kutoka Safaricom. Mimi naitwa Justina Siokao aka Madam 2020. Nakaa hapa Machakos. Mimi natumia huduma ya Safaricom ya tunukiwa. Ofa ambayo nanunua ya tunukiwa ni ya Clendon double double na inunua kupitia kwa Star 44H. Inanisaidia kwa sababu ni affordable na sipimiwi. <laughs> kupigia mashambiki wakati ninaweka wimbo mpya hivyo ndo tumeweza kupeleka nyimbo zangu viral na zina trend zaidi hiyo credit ndo ile wakenya wengi wanaendelea kuzawadika kila siku kwa kutumia tunukiwa na wanapata extra juu ya extra piga star triple four hash ili utunukiwe leo
Hey, was it Kani? Nene, ni kina kusumbo? Just going through something. Well, I'm sure you don't want to have that conversation with me. Kuna kitu important ndiye nina taka tuonge. I've moved on. Kuna manisha? I don't expect to be seeing you ever again. Are you trying to break up with me? Okay, the boy, Julie. Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever with Panadol's Optizorb formula. The tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. Thank you for staying with your world on NTV Kenya this morning. Of course, we are talking about the COVID-19 vaccine that has been rolled out in the country. We are also following up on that, uh, of course, story of the tragic passing of the Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli, who died last evening in Dar es Salaam uh, due to what, uh, of course, the Tanzanian government uh, said was heart complications, something the President was uh, struggling with, uh, with over the last uh, 10 years. Of course, we will be, uh, we'll continue covering this story for you, uh, of course, for the rest of the day, and this um, more, sub um, I mean, more comprehensive coverage will come in our subsequent bulletins. But uh, of course, uh, before we continue our discussion on the COVID-19 vaccine, President John Pombe Magufuli, of course, the late, was also very uh, vocal in terms of um, the issue of COVID-19 and his handling, of course, raised eyebrows across the world considering his opinions being one of the biggest, of course, skeptics of COVID-19 uh, and, of course, um, a skeptic also about the efficacy about the, of, of the vaccine uh, that is uh, being used, of course, to treat COVID-19. But here's a compilation of what else we have compiled, what he had to say uh, with regards to COVID-19 since when it was announced in Tanzania way early last year. Kama tulivyo hapa leo kwenye uwanja huu, simuoni hata mmoja lieva barakoa. Hii ni kwa sababu mungu wa metenda. Hii ni kwa sababu mungu wa natupenda wa Tanzania. Tulimuomba kwa pamoja madhehebu yote. Na tukamshukuru kwa pamoja. Kazi ya mungu haishindui. Tena kuwa sihi viongozi wetu wa dini. Kuendelea kuliombea taifaretu. Lakini pia ni wahimize wa umini wetu. Kusali ilu kuliombea taifa letu. Kama tusikubali shetani kupitia korona. Atuvuruge na kumsahau mwenyezi mungu. Huo ndio wakati wa kupambana na shetani korona kwa nguvu zote. Nina imani mungu wetu siku zote atakuwa upande wetu na mapambano haya yetu dhidi ya korona tutayashinda. Tulipopereka sampo ya papai 
Tukaipa jina Elizabeth Anne miaka 26 female. Papai lile lilikuwa positive kwamba lina corona. Maana yake maji mle ndani zilizotolewa mle kwenye papai ni positive. Hata mimi nitakufa kutokana na alicho kipanga Mungu naweza nikafa kwa corona naweza nikafa kwa nini? Na ndio maana mnaniona hata mimi sijavaa barakoa sio kwamba siogopi kufa. Nimeona niliseme hili. Nimemshukuru sister hapa hajavaa lakini wenzake wawili wamevaa. Nikasema sasa kama hawa viongozi ndio wanataka tuwaeleza kila siku tumwamini Mungu vipi leo? Mungu anaweza. Mama yule profesa, hebu simama mama wakuone. Huyu ni profesa. Ni msomi. Aliwahi kupata kansa. Titi lake moja likatolewa. Lakini Mungu amemsimamia mpaka leo anaishi. Na anaimba na kumwimbia Kristo. Hajikwezi. Ninayasema haya sio kwamba mimi ni mtiifu sana au mwaminifu sana au kwamba mimi sio mzambi tutaokolewa kwa neema. Because that is the former, now former, of course, Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli uh, with this very vocal remarks with regards to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But away from that, of course, it's been a few months since the former uh, Machako Senator Boniface Kabaka died. And the by-elections are slated for today. I think voting began earlier this morning. And our reporter, Kevin Silu, is standing by in Machakos with the latest. Kevin, what's going on? Uh, thank you very much and a very good morning to you. From here in Machakos County, right now we are at the main tiling center, uh, which is the Machakos uh, tiling center, whereby uh, after uh, the voting has been completed, this is where uh, the results are going to be uh, declared or the winner is going to be declared. And in Machakos today, uh, in the morning, I managed to visit some of the polling stations uh, in Matungulu, sub county, uh, in Nguluni. And uh, uh, the queues are not that big, uh, people are just coming one by one, and uh, the numbers are the turnout seems to be uh, a bit little and according to the IBC that uh, across all over uh, the county of Machakos uh, the, 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 the voting has started just well and uh, no itches has been reported uh, so far uh, and uh, in Machakos county just to tell you is that uh, we have 13, 35 uh, polling stations uh, with uh, 8 constituencies in, in each and every constituency we have a tiling center whereby in the tiling center is where all the votes from uh, the wards are going to be accumulated and then uh, announced from there they will proceed to, uh, to the main tally center which is here in Machakos uh, uh, University uh, for declaration and uh, in the morning uh, maybe uh, to just to say last last week this week and this week uh, we had uh, uh, one of the candidates uh, maybe getting out of the race and maybe we may not know according to the IBC they said that uh, the candidate has not uh, given an official letter or an official communication so that means then he is still in the uh, ballot and we are here in Machakos to give you any uh, update about whatever is going to happen in Macha across the, the, the Machakos uh, county uh, this by election. Maybe just to tell you that uh, what we have right now is that uh, uh, voting has started smoothly in Mulu Mutesia. We have visited uh, Mulu Mutesia Gardens where we have a sender uh, with uh, around 16 uh, polling stations. And even in Mavoko sub county, in Mavoko uh, constituency, we also have a sender which has 40 uh, polling stations. And we will be following this closely, maybe to know uh, what will transpire during the day in each and every constituency and to give you updates as they uh, stream in. For now, back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Kevin. Kevin Siller there, our reporter from Machakos, taking us, of course, giving us the latest with regards to that uh, senatorial by-election which follows the death of Senator Boniface Kabaka late last year. We will be going back to him around um, later in the bulletins, maybe 1 p.m. and at 4 p.m. with the latest to tell us the latest with regards to the uh, voting and how it's ongoing. But for now, we have to go back to our discussion earlier on. And just before we went for the break, we saw... Uh, the feedback on social media and the sound bites that we played of the people 
And even from what President Magufuli has said, there's clearly an issue of religion uh, behind uh, how skeptic and hesitant people are with first the, 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 the virus itself and also the vaccine. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Victor. Yesterday, such a time, actually, we met the Interfaith Council of Kenya. We had very candid discussions with them. They are very supportive. In fact, they said they want to lead by example. That was very encouraging to us. And that is why yesterday, um, if you uh, went through the statement by the Cabinet Secretary Mutai Kagwe, he actually said the clergy have been brought forward as a priority group, given the kind of work they do. But we also look at it as going to be very strongly a good advocacy. Um, they, they, they said what uh, Dr. Njenga said, information, I know sensitization. Uh, of course, this vaccine, you know, there's been a lot um, because of pressure. It came at a very short notice and we are trying to put everything in place. We will try to catch up in terms of information. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's very important that uh, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's because um, science here is really come to help. Uh, we, we must also trust the science and, and, give, and, and sit on the side of science when it's really required because um, I know even in the U.S., uh, former President uh, Trump, yeah. Uh, you know, two days ago, I was happy when he told his people, his supporters, go and get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That's not what we used to hear from him. In Tanzania, it's unfortunate. Um, uh, uh, the late Magufuli may not, uh, did not live to see how the entire uh, epidemic with corona may. And, and it, it could well play out that now the new leadership may tell people, you really need to go by science. And we could see a different uh, um, epidemiology in that in that region. Okay. So I, I, I strongly, r religious leaders are very, very important. But let us know that science has also been very instrumental. And vaccines in particular have helped us conquer a lot of diseases. Without the childhood vaccines, I don't know what the population of the world would be. Can you imagine uh, without a vaccine of polio? I mean, people in their um, mid-40s, 50s to 60s, a measles, a major killer, whooping cough, so here is a tool that really the scientists are saying there can harm. In fact, when I hear people saying the vaccine is likely to harm, people have put something in, there could be so many things that people could put things in to harm you. Okay. I really wanted to, to come back to you with the latest figures before because I know we're about to release mm -hmm. you. But I wanted to bring in Dr. Eva Njenga here, but I noticed that she's, <laughs> she's already on the way and she's in, I, th I think she's on the road. Maybe she may not be able to respond to this. So let me bring in uh, Dr. Gaduki here then. Ah, I think she will be able to respond to anything then. Uh, Dr. Dr. Eva Njenga, let me come back to you then on the very same issue about how we disseminate this information just briefly. You, you realize that there are people who trust their pastors. There are people who tr trust, uh, let's say, um, I mean, their religious leader. There are people who trust their MCs. What is the importance of involving everyone? Because there are also people who trust their personal doctors. What is the in importance of bringing a or everyone um, in this issue of educating the people and reassuring them about the vaccine? Uh, hi, Victor. Again, let me tell you what you've just put it uh, uh, straight as it is. Involve the people who are trusted by the community in passing the, uh, the information. If you have uh, a pastor who has a congregation of a, a thousand people and they trust, his word will be the gospel. So first, let's first give the, the clergy and the, our, uh, the pastors and everybody, even the imams, give them the correct information. Once they understand, they will be the best people to communicate this, not us. We can only communicate, communicate to the people who trust us. My patients at my clinic trust me, and they've been asking me these questions because I've been communicating with them for long. So you get the people on the ground who are trusted by the community, give them the facts, and uh, involve them in the dissemination of this information. That way you will get the right uh, perspective and you would, I'm sure we will be able to, to give people the, what they need. Remember, the vaccine is still uh, voluntary. Nobody is going to be forced, but I would prefer that me, people make informed decisions once they get the correct information. Thank you. And, and, and now, before we let you go, Dr. Tari, you are the chair of the task force of this, of this vaccine. 
And the other question on everyone's mind right now is, it's been two weeks. Do we know how many people have already been vaccinated? Yes. Um, uh, by yesterday, we had 20,000, actually uh, 19,900 and something. But late in the evening, I looked at um, the um, change of platform, and it was very encouraging. We were moving anything close to almost 5,000 a day. Uh, what people don't understand is that actually the vaccine arrived on the 3rd, and by the 7th, it was available to all counties. 8th was the Monday, and to us that was week one. Counties started collecting their allocation from regional stores, which are nine, and therefore you have quite a bit of distance. But by Wednesday of last week, Wednesday of last week, 23 counties had started vaccinating. And by Friday, 43 counties. And by yesterday, all the counties are vaccinating and reporting. Okay. So if you really look at the period of vaccination, it's last Wednesday to this Wednesday, that is the seven calendar days. Okay. Although in terms of our program, the week st that started 8th was that. Now, um, so, but I was a little taken aback when I heard people saying, oh, 9,000 in, in, in one week, mm -hmm. that is hesitancy. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how you can measure hesitancy after three days. <laughs> Our, our plan was very clear, 1.25 million people between March and June. We will have to monitor on a weekly basis. And obviously, again, there's the context of Kenya. There are regulatory issues we had to make. We are a devolved healthcare system. The vaccinations are occurring in the counties. We had to get the counties on board. We are not the people who are, who are to select which posts are going to vaccinate. We had to wait for those lists. And then we now start capacity building. Okay. But the encouraging thing is that we are now bringing the private sector. As Dr. Njenga has said, the uh, private hospitals have now started getting their doses. Half of healthcare services in Kenya is in the private sector. So we are going to see this ramping. So we, we, we started and we are climbing. Okay. We are going to reach a cruising speed hoping to do even 15 to 20,000 a day. Just briefly, let me bring in Dr. Gashi because he's our representative of the private hospitals uh, on this panel. Dr. Gashi, Dr. Tari has spoken about um, the involvement of private hospitals. As Nairobi West Hospital, have you received these vaccines? And just briefly, uh, what is the importance, of course, uh, given the, the role that you play in helping contain this virus of involving uh, all stakeholders, including private hospitals, briefly? Thank you. Thank you, Victor. I think Dr. Akwari has clearly stated that uh, half of uh, all the health care that is provided in this country is actually provided by the private sector. And there is no way we can ignore the private sector in whatever is happening. They have played a key role in the management of COVID, right from the diagnosis, right to the treatment. And therefore, it was very crucial to involve them as far as the vaccine rollout is concerned. Okay. And I think I, I must take this opportunity to thank the government because already they have involved the private sector. Uh, I can confirm that, uh, for example, at Nairobi West Hospital, we received the vaccine on Tuesday morning uh, at around 11. We collected um, our, our location from Bagadi Hospital and we started the vaccination immediately. Actually, by the end of Tuesday, when we collected the vaccines, we had vaccinated about 50 people. And by now, we are approaching uh, 200 people. All right. So, uh, I, and I think I, I like the way the county has come up, has designed the way of distributing. There are several divisions which have been identified. And in those divisions, they have allocated a certain number to health centers. Uh, may I also emphasize that much as Nairobi West Hospital has received, mm -hmm. we are not actually confining uh, the vaccination only to Nairobi West Hospital um, workers only. Okay. The nearby clinics, so long as they can be able to identify themselves, okay. they, are, they are welcome to come and get the vaccine. Thank you, uh, the whole idea is the target is the frontline workers, and therefore that is why it is extremely important um, for us to be able to avail it to the people uh, who are concerned. Okay. It's, it's also important to note probably at this point, uh, Victor, that uh, we have to be careful because uh, I'm sure already there could be some centers already advertising themselves as vaccination centers and probably even charging the general public. Please note that there, is a, there are gazetted uh, centers and they are available um, whereby one can confirm that this is a vaccination center and I'm likely to get the vaccine, not uh, a fake. Okay, thank you, so Dr. That's important. Ari. All right, uh, l let me bring it back to you, Dr. Ari, because I, I, I know we we're supposed to let you go in a short while. But th there is the issue then of we've received 1.02 million 
the population of the country is 47 million. This, mm. considering everyone is supposed to get two doses, which means this 1.2 million is just mm. for maybe 500,000 people. Mm -hmm. And the concern then is it's going to take us so long mm. to, by the time we can vaccinate the entire population. Yes, and, and uh, uh, this is driven by the fact that, uh, remember first, we are coming from a period when the vaccines are not just there globally. Even if now you have money and you want to put orders on the approved and, uh, vaccines by the Spirit and Regulatory Authority, they, they are just difficult to come by. Uh, that is one big consideration. Now, the second consideration is that no vaccine is approved for use in the under-18s and pregnant women. Now, when you look at that, but, but after some time, and if there's enough evidence, then that could change. Mm -hmm. So Kenya, under the COVAX mechanism, we now have been allocated 3.5 million doses. Uh, the government of India uh, uh, generously gave us 100,000 doses. So we have 3.6 million doses, to, which can adequately cover up to 1.8 million people. There may be wastages here because of logistical issues. But if you then look at 1.8, our target of 1.2, during this period up to June, we are, I am confident we are going to meet our target. And uh, you, you heard yesterday the Cabinet Secretary saying uh, people with comorbidities will also now be brought on board because they are most at risk. It's, uh, immediately we, we receive the second consignment expected in early April. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think we are on the right track. Um, the issue of population coverage, um, we must look at our epidemiology. It, it hasn't been as severe as in the U.S. I believe by the time we reach 30 to 40 percent coverage, mm -hmm. we should be seeing an impact on, the, on, 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 on this disease. When do we expect to fully uh, vaccinate our population? To fully vaccinate our population, I can't tell. But our projection of uh, 40 percent of the adult population we are projecting to, uh, of the entire population rather, we are, we are, we are uh, expecting to do that by 2023. Okay. However, as vaccines become more available and more affordable, this could easily change. So in terms of planning, we have to be realistic with the, the challenges, current challenges, but we, we are also putting in a mechanism that we could easily scale up as vaccines become available. Kenyans should know we are not only going to use AstraZeneca. In fact, others, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board is looking at others. I, I know about a week or so ago, they, they locally registered Sputnik from Russia. I, I know a number of other candidates, the, the Chinese, Sinovac, Sinopharm. So we should soon start seeing a lot more. And the okay. private sector role will be very important in scaling okay. up. And, and just briefly, because I, I really need to wind this up, but then are we relying on the COVAX, uh, over relying on the COVAX initiative? At this point, we almost have no, uh, no choice because that is where there's a subsidy. The commercial cost of the current vaccines is anywhere between 31 to $38 a dose. So that is 4000 So two doses would be like 8000 mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, the rich nations are uh, virtually buying. Okay. So the COVAX mechanism came in as a subsidy mm -hmm. and also to try and ensure equity that even the poor, low-middle-income countries are able to get okay. this. However... We are also exploring uh, the use of the Africa CDC. The National Treasury is in, in, in discussions about that. And also we've been talking to manufacturers directly. So we are open to several channels. Okay. And, and finally, then, for anyone who is watching, once I have been received mine, can I throw away the mask and go to the party? Absolutely not. Don't throw away the guard. Okay. The, it, it, it will be the biggest disaster if we went and did that. Okay. Let, let's not become really the, 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 the people who don't seem to learn. Mm -hmm. um, we, we see what is happening um, with our neighbors here. What has protected and saved Kenyans is the tough measures. We have been very adherent, but we can do better. So the vaccine is giving you a lot more personal protection. But we are hoping as we vaccinate more people, then we'll see an impact. Protect yourself and protect others as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Willis Akwale, the chairman of the COVID-19 task force in Kenya. Unfortunately, we have to let you go because we're aware you're supposed to be uh, in the Senate, I believe, uh, with the CS. But we have really, of course, uh, thoroughly enjoyed your company and your insights with regards to the COVID-19 vaccine. Do we have any feedback? All right. Let's just get some feedback before we go into that quick break. Yes. 
Uh, Salim Masi says, I already got two of the COVID-19 jabs. I don't have any side effects. I don't know how true that is. Um, Ramimi Robert says, who? Me? In Kenya? Not a chance. Uh -huh. Okay. I gave it, Junior. He says, same way president was the first to receive the new currency note, first to receive the Uduma number, first to, to get the SGR from Mombasa to Nairobi. I will take it if um, he takes it too. I doubt when he feared to be the first uh, from the front. Nevertheless, I will be the first from the back and not from the front line. Interesting. I gave it, Junior, there. Uh, do we still have any more? Okay, Henderson Keegan, he says, I thought we are supposed to disband the country and everyone to go home. <laughs> okay, Sally, I think we've seen this one from Sally Massey. I think that's okay. Do we still have any more? Uh, some more, Agevi Jr. I think I've seen this one from Agevi. We've read, check on this one. The last one. Uh, hum. Can we get the last one? Yes, Pinches Mwash. He says, nope, if European countries are stopping injections of vaccines why kenya our leaders have not received vaccines even the minister in charge yet they want wanjikus to lead thank you very much that is pinches much of course it is part of the feedback that we continue to receive and sample from you we have to go for a short break but remember we're still following up on that uh, the biggest story on the continent at the moment and even in the east african region the passing of a former tanzanian president the late john Pom Magufuli, who died last evening in Dar es Salaam due to heart complications. His death was announced by the Vice President Samia Suluhu last evening, who is supposed to take over as the acting president of Tanzania until when she will be sworn in. We will be giving you the latest update and comprehensive coverage with regards to the time, uh, the times and life of John Pombe Magufuli. We have to go for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Damu ni mavumbe, mavumbe ni atarudi. Bina damu ni mavumbe, mavumbe ni atarudi. Na tukifika huko, tutaimba haleluya. Makao ya raha wa nastare, iko huko mbingu. Bina damu ni mavumi, mavumi ni ataru. Bina damu ni mavumi, mavumi ni ataru. Na tu kipika huko, tu taimba haleluya. Makao ya raha unastare, iko huko. Not to keep it go to time by hallelujah. opportunities for a lifetime of happiness. The future is bright because you can always bank on family. Family Bank with you for life. Available in 1 kilogram and 800 gram bars and 175 gram tablets. Also available in all your favorite variants. 
Pushingdi, a quality product from Pani Oils. How did you end up being one of the most sought after DOPs? Oh man, as a creative you have to always improvise. You know, when I was starting out, I was, uh, you know, mostly working as a guerrilla filmmaker. Uh -huh. And that puts you in that situation where you always have to find plan B and improvise. So when you're on set, maybe ideas change. If I'm going to do it like a pro, I am going to face all the characters in that list. You have seen this one has 36 players in the list, yeah? Yeah. So I have to know each and every player's component moves, like there's the frame data. Their strength to... and their weaknesses. Yeah. I have to know for every character. And then I have to main one character who I'm going to play. So just to master one character can take you three months. One. Three months? Yeah. Help build a strong foundation for your growing child with Nestle Nunkid. Nestle Nunkid 4. Our best for you. Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizob formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. That's the biggest story of the moment, of course, with regards to the passing of Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli due to heart complications. It was announced late last evening by the Vice President Samia Suluhu. We will be following up that story. But we have to wind up our discussion about the COVID-19 vaccine, especially in Kenya. But let's revisit a story that we had for you earlier. And a number of countries have temporarily suspended the use of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccines over concerns about patients developing post job blood clots. Danish health authorities suspended the shots for 14 days after a 60-year-old woman in Denmark was given an AstraZeneca shot, formed a blood clot and died in um, and died, sorry. Uh, Norway, Iceland, Italy, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Austria have also suspended the use of the AstraZeneca vaccines from this batch, which was sent to 17 European countries and consisted of 1 million jobs. In Austria, a 49 year old nurse died of severe blood coagulation days after receiving the shot. But a pre preliminary probe showed that the batch used was not likely to blame for the nurse's death. The European Union's medicine agency has emphasize that there's no clear indication that the vaccine caused the blood clots. Right, we are now ready to resume that discussion about the COVID-19 vaccine. And I'm still with three of my guests to uh, help us wind up this discussion. Uh, Dr. Gaduki, let me just come back to you. At, uh, I mean, this vaccine is always seen as the surest way or for humanity to defeat uh, COVID-19, which has been with us for more than a year now. D briefly explain to us why the vaccine seems like the only way out. The reason why, actually, the only way we are getting out of this COVID uh, pandemic is the vaccine is because we have a mutating virus. The problem with the mutating virus is, ordinarily, for example, with something like chicken pox or measles, if you get it once, your immunity lasts a lot of the times for the rest of your life, right? But it doesn't look like it's the case with COVID. We already have people who've had more than one infection with uh, COVID-19, which suggests that either 
the innate immunity to COVID does not last that long, or we're already seeing mutant strains in the community, which means that even when you've had COVID and recovered from it, you're still likely to get uh, COVID again. Now, the challenge for, for that is the mutant strains might end up, like we've seen in South Africa, in Brazil, in England now, in the, U, in the, in the United States of America. The mutant strain sometimes ends up being a more deadly disease than the, the, the prevailing strain of COVID, okay? So the idea is we vaccinate enough people, we stop the spread of the virus, and in that way, we can get out of this. But as long as we allow people to keep getting COVID, we are going to keep getting mutant strains and we'll keep dealing with COVID probably for the next 50 years. Okay. So, uh, to be honest, there is no other way of getting out of this uh, pandemic other than the vaccine. So the issue of the new variants coming in, then, uh, doesn't that complicate this whole issue of taking the vaccine? I mean, will the vaccines be effective with, uh, with the variants that come up? The good thing is, vaccine production is a continuous process. So we are already seeing the companies that came up with uh, like the mRNA vaccines, they're already back looking at, can we get a vaccine that covers all the, all the various uh, variants? That's one. Number two, even with the variants, like for example, the South African one, the vaccine still shows efficacy in preventing severe disease and death, the, the existing vaccines. Now, the, the other thing is this, that the quicker we can vaccinate people, the quicker we can stop this. That's actually the idea of mass vaccination. The reason why we've kicked polio out of Africa is because we ran massive vaccination campaigns where we were targeting everyone. But as long as it is piecemeal and we are tar targeting 10% of the population, the other percent is not interested or there are not enough vaccines. And that's why vaccine availability is a huge, is a huge, huge problem for the world. Partly, that might explain why the European countries are, are pulling away from the AstraZeneca vaccine. It might not actually be because of the side effects that we are seeing. It might be because of availability. That they are, they are, you know there's politics in all of these things. Mm -hmm. And they might be pulling away from the vaccine because of availability. Uh, the Oxford vaccine, uh, they promised a certain number. They're only able to deliver about half. And then even those half, they are, they are going to be delays. So maybe the European Union is looking at it. And they now, they're exploring the Russian vaccine, the Chinese vaccine. So the, there's also a lot of politics in terms of vaccine distribution. And we, we, we must hope that eventually we have enough vaccine for the whole world. Okay. Let me, let me bring in Dr. Gashi here because um, um, clearly before Dr. Kwale left, he, he mentioned how, um, you know, we have to rely on this COVAX scheme because it's the only one that is subsidized. Uh, but if you look at countries like Britain, they have already vaccinated, I think, a third of their population. And, 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 and for, for, for the rest of us, we're still waiting for this COVAX scheme, which I believe, uh, from a layman's point, has to be most likely once these other developed countries have, which can pay the, the premium price. Can. What does this um, mean for Kenya and other maybe uh, less developed countries in try, trying to control the, 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 the virus? Yes, uh, Victor, I think one of the challenges um, that we have about this vaccine is uh, its availability. Uh, remember, of course, the, 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 rich, the so called rich countries or the wealthy countries have the privilege. They have the finance to be able to buy these. And the question is does it mean it will only be available to the rich countries mm -hmm. and not to the. And therefore, that's why we're actually saying this is where, uh, for example, the World Health Organization comes in to make sure that. The, the, the cost is highly subsidized because it would actually mean that people will never, some of the people who really deserve it will never get it. And this is quite a challenge. Uh, actually, Britain was the first country to roll out this vaccine. Uh, of course, AstraZeneca is made um, in, in, in Britain or it originated from Britain. But even before then, they had already approved the Pfizer one. And, and we can actually see how easy it is to get these vaccines in those countries as opposed to our countries. And therefore, the issue of subsidies, and that is why I'm actually saying at this particular time, the government has gone you know, out of its way mm -hmm. to make it available at no cost. Uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes, uh, Victor, people become suspicious when something is free. free. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> but, but, but what, what I would uh, ask, uh, our people, and especially now that it is available, yeah. and in particular the healthcare workers, because remember the moment the healthcare workers, the frontline workers are resistant, they are going to set the long signal. Now, apparently, 
if it came at a cost, I don't know whether the acceptability would be higher. But the idea is, uh, just like Dr. Haruki has said, the key thing is this vaccine has to be available and be given to a certain percentage of people so that we can ensure we have what we call herd immunity. Okay. Uh, remember, it is not only protecting you at an individual level, mm -hmm. it is also preventing transmissibility or the, the fact that you can easily transmit this virus. Okay. And, and right now, uh, Victor, what choice do we really have? Mm -hmm. yeah? Even if this vaccine was only 20%, a certain percentage protection is better than nothing okay. because we really don't have anything. Okay. So my, my, my urge is let the people take it because remember if the hesitancy or the, 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 the resistance is so high and we do not achieve, for example, 60 to 70%, then it may have an adverse effect. We will the virus will continue being transmitted and incidentally, it will continue um, you know, spreading. Okay. Another thing I want to emphasize is that it is not, and you asked that one earlier on, mm. it is not a reason for us to throw out our masks. Mm -hmm. This is one of the armamentarium that we are having to fight COVID. It does not substitute all what we have been doing. Okay. So it's important that we realize that. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gaduki, obviously we're coming to the tail end of this, this discussion, B but uh, the ministry announced recently that we are now on what they call, or what we call the third wave. Just talk to us about what's the difference between this third wave and the second one and the first one. The, the reason why diseases uh, like COVID have what, what would look like seasonal variations in terms of numbers is because of also the weather. For example, the last one and a half months we've had unseasonal rains where we didn't expect it. So, you know, more people being indoors. So you'll see that increases the transmissibility of the virus, you know, that closer contact of people. Uh, the other thing is, of course, that once people start getting, you know, there's, there's, there's a bit of fatigue. People have been wearing masks for one year now and you're like, okay, maybe I don't have to wear masks. And then you, you go back to having family gatherings, for example. So it is actually a slackening of our preventive measures that is probably leading to this third wave. The other thing, though, and it's something that uh, we have to... It's actually one of the reasons why we need to be looking at getting as many people vaccinated as possible, is that the, the virus is also mutating, that the virus might actually be becoming more infectious now, so that previously where we'd see, like if we'd ran a thousand tests, uh, less than 100 of them would be positive. Now, the test positive rates are about 13-15%, which means that we might also be looking at a new variant of the virus that mm -hmm. is much more infective than what we were seeing before. Okay. But and then, of course, one last thing. The more people have virus in the, in the community, the easier it is for the virus to spread. Okay. All right. But let me... Let me um, talk to Dr. Gashia because um, what we have seen in the, the, the last few days is the numbers going up, getting to uh, a level of 1,000 infections per day, something we have not seen for so long. Yes. And the, 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 the feeling we get from um, the MOH is that the number of people suffering from the infections, even in hospitals, has gone really high. Maybe from uh, a private hospital's perspective, yes. uh, the number of people you have in your hospital right now, are the, what is the situation like? Actually, Victor, one of the ways that we notice that the the third wave is already with us, mm. happened in the hospitals. Remember, the people who are going to come to the hospital are not the people with mild cases or even the moderate cases. These are people who will come with severe cases. And I'll just give an example. At Nairobi West Hospital, uh, sometimes uh, early um, February, at one point we had only two patients in the ward. Mm -hmm. And actually we were literally closing the ward mm -hmm. because we were saying, now we, we, are, we are apparently out of the wood, but by the first week of um, March, that number had jumped, jumped from 2 to 38 within a span of about two weeks. Yeah? And that raised an alarm. Mm -hmm. What is really happening? Mm -hmm. Another thing we also noticed is that the people who are coming were much sicker. Mm -hmm. Most of them actually were just coming in and they were being taken straight to the ICU. And it's like, what is really happening? Because we would have a gradation of the disease. They will come with a mild form, moderate form. But the ones that we were seeing were in uh, you know, severe, very severe cases requiring even ICU. And by, actually by yesterday, mm. the hospital had 71 cases. Yeah? Again, within that span. Most that's of the hospitals will tell you from that. February to uh, from now. From February to now. And by the way, when we see those numbers rising in the hospital, 
it, te it gives you an indication of what is happening in the community. Okay. Yes, the, the number of people who don't require hospitalization mm -hmm. are even much more. more than so apparently also what we have noticed is that the, 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 there is a bit of change in terms of the symptomatology or in terms of the symptoms mm -hmm. that they are coming with. Remember, we used to have those classic things of fever. We would have a classic fever of cough and sometimes even wheezing yeah? uh, or, or sneezing. Mm. We are just seeing some people coming with difficulties in breath rates. You ask them, they didn't have any fever. You see some darkening of certain parts of the body. They are coming with diarrhea. So, and that is why we are also worried, Victor, that could there be, could we be dealing with a variant of this virus? Mm -hmm. Again, I would say. That's what GM it, says. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Because it, it seems to be very, very aggressive. Okay. Yes. But briefly then, how do you feel then as someone who has seen the numbers grow from 2 to 71 in a, a span of maybe a month? Yes. How do you feel when you see people walking around without masks, uh, without sanitizing, they are cramped up in one space? Victor, I get scared. I get scared because I think what is actually happening is that um, initially we took the issue of preventive measures, wearing masks, washing our hands, sanitizing very, very seriously. But we seem to be getting used to it. Like it's business as usual. Mm -hmm. We are not too worried anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and the moment I meet with you, Victor, it's like you are a buddy, you are afraid, I don't need to protect myself. So we, we seem to have thrown the caution to the weed. Mm -hmm. And it's high time we urge our people that the key elements of actually preventing this disease mm -hmm. is in the preventive measures. Okay. Yeah? Remember, we are also saying that vaccine is adding to what we have now for prevention. It is not replacing what we already have. L let me bring in Dr. Gadzuki. Dr. Gadzuki, can we afford to throw caution in the wind or get used to COVID-19, as Dr. Gashi says? Well... We, we are not in a position to say that, uh, you know, we are out of the woods or to even throw caution to the, wood, to, to the wind because we, as a resource poor country, where we, we don't have as many resources as maybe the West, even our access to those vaccines is poor. So while the West can rely on vaccinating, I mean, countries like Israel are looking at more than 50% of the population vaccinated. Well, they can afford uh, now to begin to gently ease back the social constraints about, uh, you know, interacting. I mean, if you're looking at 2023, means that for the large majority of uh, Kenyans, wearing masks, uh, social distancing and washing hands has to become, it almost becomes second nature. Instead of thinking of it as something that we will stop at a point, we, we just embrace it and let it become the way you brush your teeth in the morning mm -hmm. or the way, you know, you take a shower. It becomes part of your daily routine. The, the other thing, of course, is that we, we also have limited uh, healthcare facilities. If, uh, like Dr. is saying, Nairobi West is looking at uh, 78 people and they, they were at two a month ago, if that trend continues, it means that you'll be calling into Nairobi West Hospital looking for a bed for a relative of yours and nothing can be done. Okay. All right. Okay, but, but earlier on, we, 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 we noticed the issue of how much people believe in other people. So I believe so much in my pastor. I believe so much in my, in my MP. How, how does it make you feel when we see some of these people who should be leading kind of misleading and we see politicians holding rallies with no social distancing and no masks? I think long term, we also have to be responsive to the public. I mean, at the end of the day, we are serving the public. We, these vaccines are not for for just healthcare workers, the, the treatment of COVID is not just for, uh, you know, a person and his friends. A politician does not, a politician is a leader of people, he's not a leader of, you know, so maybe what we now need to ask ourselves is, will Kenyans trust the vaccine more if they see their leaders getting the vaccines? And mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, I mean, when you look at the number of MPs we have in this country, for example, if all of them got vaccines, it would be less than a thousand vaccines. Mm -hmm. and. At that point, maybe Kenyans might say, oh, look, they, they all got their vaccines. We have pictures of, you know, the person I voted for mm -hmm. getting the vaccine. So maybe we might need to change our approach a little bit and uh, embrace, you know, the, the, the public's concern that why are you only giving this to, to poor people if we are not seeing our leaders? For example, the Catholic Church. You know, the Catholic Church, their bishops came out the other day and said, you know what, we are in entire support of this vaccination drive. The Pope himself, got a vaccine in public and you know it's it's in the it's in the public domain of the pope getting a vaccine maybe that's how to go about this where yes i can understand the idea of let frontline workers get this first but when you look at the numbers of leaders that we have that would help to make a change in perception yeah maybe it's it's something to consider is it a price that we we can pay 
Well, look at Tanzanians, Tanzania's example. I'm, I'm, my condolences to the people of Tanzania. It's, it's, it's terrible to lose someone like Magufuli that Tanzanians so believed in. But what will Magufuli's enduring uh, message to the world be? That mm -hmm. there is no such thing as COVID. Yeah. Those are mistakes that leaders simply cannot afford to make when you have a disease that is not a respect of persons. Okay. All right. Uh, of course, and speaking about leaders, leaders and, and, and leadership, uh, we have uh, President Kenyatta is supposed to address the nation any time from now. Uh, I believe with the should be the, the East African community. We don't know what it's about yet. But my colleague, um, those are live pictures you can see from State House. The president is about to address the nation in a short while. We'll find out the, um, the details about that address in a short while. And my colleague, Olive Barros, will be coming up uh, in a short while to help us with that. But before we do that, gentlemen, let me just great, um, I mean, get your closing comments to this topic briefly. Um, Dr. Gashi, uh, with regards to containing this virus moving forward. Well, uh, thank you, Victor. I, I must say and inform Kenyans that right now, the only choice we have is this vaccine. I know there are a lot of concerns about the, the, the safety of this vaccine, and these concerns are varied. We cannot ignore them. But considering the statistics and the numbers, mm -hmm. we don't have a reason uh, to fear this vaccine. And I, as I say, I got mine on Wednesday last week. I didn't feel anything. Okay, one may say probably you are healthy or something. But all said and done, the risks of getting the virus and dying of it is much higher than actually getting the side effects of this vaccine. All right. So please get the vaccine. Okay. Dr. Katsuki, in 30 minutes, your closing remarks. 30 seconds, sorry. <laughs> your closing remarks. If we ever needed leadership, it is now. There is too many opinion leaders in our community who are not taking up the role of leadership where this pandemic is concerned. There's only so much that doctors can keep saying and the message that we can pass might not have the same weight as if community leaders came out and said, you know, we are in support of this uh, of these initiatives that the government is putting in place in terms of, uh, of, of controlling the pandemic. Let us not lose an opportunity to get on top of this. All right. Thank you very much. I think that's my key takeaway here is the vaccine is our only way out and we cannot afford to lose focus at this point. And that brings us to the end of the discussion today. Remember, we were talking about the COVID-19 vaccine in Kenya and the concerns of safety around the country. We can't, we will not have enough time to sample some of the feedback you've been sending them since yesterday and we appreciate some of them, by the way. Uh, but for now... Uh, we have to say goodbye, but remember we are following that very uh, important and big story about the passing of Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli. He died last evening in Dar es Salaam due to heart complications. That was announced by the Vice President Samia Suluhu, and this is something that we will be following uh, closely. We have the Machako Senatorial by-election ongoing, as well as the upcoming, um, of course, ad uh, address to the nation by President Uhuru Kenyatta. These are some, some of the stories we will be following up for you closely. You don't have to you don't have to go anywhere. My colleague Olive Barrows is coming in a bit. Presenting the new Hapik Bathroom Cleaner. Compared to ordinary detergents, its thick formulation gives you superior cleaning and kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses all around the bathroom. Blue for the toilet and red for the bathroom. Fact Finder from the BBC. Jess Alfrey is the media in Botswana. We tell you what we found out. Fake, fake, disgusting news. How a term popularized by Donald Trump rose to prominence during the Nigerian elections thanks